Okay guys, so this is actually after the fact, but we're gonna pretend this is before I towed. The original video got screwed up, so I have to redo it. But I'm gonna redo it to show you guys the whole hitching procedure on my hitch. So what I put on here was a draw tight hidden hitch. All the major hitch companies are owned by the same company anyway, so they'll hit, see their hitches are very similar, if not the same. The Maki one's really cool. You bolt it in under the car here, and then you don't, it's invisible, you know? And then you have this part here, so don't lose the keys. So this is something like I've never seen. It's got a locking piece. So what you do, you, you can actually lock it too, but it's spring loaded. It's kind of hard to explain how it works. But basically I'm gonna put this under the car here and you gotta find the center. Finding the center of the hitch down there is sometimes a little challenging without crawling under, but I just found it. Here we go. So then you get this piece, slide it up in there. You hear that click? Look at that, no vibration, it's tight. Now I could get the key and I could then lock that on. I'm not gonna do that right now. But the, then I got my ball mount, which is cool. I actually have a, a two inch ball on here with a way safe clamshell adapter to make it two and five sixteenths because all of my trailers are two and five sixteenths. I gave up and having to change balls all the time. And you know, that'll of course slide in there. The draw tight kit gives you this really neat anti-rattle pin comes with it. They even give you a little wrench to tighten it up. So, neat kit. I'm gonna put this in, hitch it up, we'll go on to the next step. Okay guys, so here's my trailer. Like I said, I'm making this after the fact because the original video of the hookup got screwed up. I don't see a reason to hook it back up. If you have never hooked up a trailer before, before you get your Maki, do some research and, and go with a friend that has one so you know the proper way to hook it up. But I'm gonna show you the changes from a normal vehicle, what I had to do on the E with the trailer. First of all, safety chains. So what I got, where do I got them? I put them back in the front. Shoot, hold on. Okay. Okay, what I, sorry guys, I forgot these things. I had to make these little adapters, check these out. So basically I got some safety chains I had laying around. Left one link and put a quick link and cut the rest. It's so that the safety chains can hook up because on the mach -E under there, it, you have very little room. I guess if you had long enough safety chains on your trailer and you cut enough plastic under the car, you could probably just put them right to that. I couldn't, so I made these. Now, I'm using quick links. And for the record, once in my life, I actually, it's actually this trailer, had it come disconnected from a vehicle. Uh, it was actually a bad coupler and I was using the safety cables, rated properly, and they snapped. Thank God the trailer, the way I designed it is if it ever came disconnected, this would hit the ground so it spiked into the dirt and stopped the trailer, no damage. Really scary. <laughs> so um, after that point, I redid every safety chain and brake, uh, automatic braking system on every trailer, which this has, and that cable actually broke before the thing went off too, so when that happened, so. I redid them all and I made everything incredibly strong. I use really thick chains. One chain can support easily the entire trailer, no problem, okay? So that said, I don't like using quick links, okay? I only use them if I absolutely have to. Down here you'll see the safety chains. This is just because I know one of you guys is gonna say something. Yeah, there's a quick link, but the chain is bolted through after it. That's just a backup. Um, I think it's SAE or one of them, recommend bolting chains to a tongue. But before we get on that other subject, don't use quick links. They're not rated for very much. Use shackles. If you're towing a really light trailer like this, 2,000 pounds, you can use the quick links. But otherwise, on heavier stuff, use shackles. Check your ratings. Because we've all seen that video with the truck hanging off the bridge, suspended, being the people's lives are saved because it was dangling by one safety chain. Would you really want that holding, being responsible to hold your whole truck and your life? No. So that's that. But you have to make something like this for the Maki, -E, okay? Otherwise, you're going to have problems hooking up. Another thing you're going to need. You're going to need something like this if you're like me. And every trailer I have, I standardize the ball sizes to 2 and 5 sixteenths. I already said that. And everyone has the round RV style connector. Every trailer, no matter how big or how small, two and five sixteenths round RV connector. Now, the Maki -E wiring harness has this kind of thing, the four wire flat. So I bought this Hopkins adapter. 
Hopkins makes several adapters that look the same, but some are a lot more expensive. This one's like 20 bucks. So get this one or just make your own, you know? Um, that way I can, I can hook it to the lights in the Maki. Also, another thing on the Maki, when you put the hitch on, a lot of people are gonna be tempted to leave the wiring down by the hitch. That is a very bad idea. It's gonna get corroded, damaged, it's down there banging around. You don't want that. What I did was I cut the wire and I rerouted it through the trunk, so I got it right here. So when I'm not towing, it stays nice and clean and new inside the Maki. When I am, I put it like this and close the trunk on it. Okay, so it's that simple. So you'll need those things. You'll hitch it up, of course, the anti-rattle pin. And then we're gonna go on to my towing video when I leave and do Central City. And I think you guys are gonna like it. Also, you guys, I should mention my towing video. I am leaving from Denver and going to Central City, Colorado, basically downtown Denver. So I, as far as I know, these are about the biggest hills you'll find anywhere in the country. So keep that in mind. If you're towing in Virginia or something like that, you're not, those are little hills. These are mountains, you know, it, it doesn't compare. So you're gonna do a lot better on the kilowatts per hour or miles per kilo, whatever it is, than I will. So this is like max hard conditions, okay? So guys, you want to know the funniest thing about to me towing my Can-Am up to the mountains with the Maki? Let me show you. Come, come this way. A lot of you guys are going to really laugh when you see this and you're thinking, why is he towing the, the Can-Am with the Maki when right on the other side of his warehouse, he has a brand new F-250 Tremor. Well, I'm doing it because I wanted to see how it worked out. You know, I want to see how it works. If it works real good, maybe I'll tow with that. For light things like the Can-Am, I consider that light, you know. Obviously, we're not towing the trophy truck. But for quick little towing, why not save money? Use the electric. It's, well, we're going to see how it works out. Okay, guys, I'm starting out 97%. And trailer is on there. Let's probably see it better there. I can't believe we're doing this. Okay, this is definitely feel it a little, even just pulling out of the parking lot here. But let's see how it feels once I accelerate a little. You feel the weight on the back of the car. I can tell you that, but ah, power's fine. We, we knew that. You know, you feel that that tug tug that you feel a lot when you're towing something heavy. That's what you feel. So we're gonna head towards the mountains. We're gonna stop and grab some food on the way. So but leave it at 97%, 292 miles. I'm gonna reset the trip meter. So, we'll see how far it is. Okay guys, so I reset the trip meter. I'm literally at the traffic light. I pulled out right from there, so that's where I started. And we're 97%, 292 miles. AC is on, 69 degrees. I'm not gonna kill myself in this heat out here. It's already 100 degrees. That's important to know for the battery too, huh? So, let's we'll see how it goes. You know guys, one of the cool things I just, I wanted to try this. Blue Cruise still works with the trailer attached, but uh, you're gonna have to be real careful if you use it because obviously if you use the turn signal to change lanes, it doesn't know you have a trailer. So you'd literally cut, you know, you, you could hit somebody. Like you so, got the payway over there by the mills. Yeah, possibly. Me and James are talking about food on uh, radio, but Blue Cruise is definitely working. I'm at 95% it's showing 1.5 kilowatt hours. I'm gonna brake a little early here. Braking, I'll tell you what guys, the Maki is so heavy with this trailer and I don't have any brakes um, on that. And man, it's real good, real good. Regen, it's like having an exhaust brake on a diesel. You know, that's way good. Okay guys, so we're on I-70 right now. Mountains are up ahead. It's cruising nice, I'm gonna tell you what, it is a breeze, hands-free. With the Blue Cruise, with the trailer, it's really, really, really nice to tow this way. You know, it definitely, you feel the weight though. Even though the mach is a very heavy car, it's almost about as much as an F-150, you definitely feel the trailer. How do you feel there. about Chick-fil-A? You know? Nah, I don't want Chick-fil-A. we got to get something. Let's get some decent food because who knows, we might be charging at some point <laughs> and hanging out. I don't know. I Okay, so 
about, I don't know, eight or nine miles from where we left in Denver. Teriyaki madness time. James has a Jeep here. Are you hungry? Yeah, when, when James has a Jeep gets hungry, there is nothing. He, he'll drive that Jeep like it's a trophy truck. So we're going to get some food and then uh, back on the road, see how it goes. We feel a little mad now. Teriyaki Madness. James has a Jeep there. Going to jump in his Jeep. I'm going to jump in the hitch equipped Mach E with the Can Am there. And we're going to move on. Guys, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I am using the air conditioning today. It's hot. So air conditioning is set at 68, 69. And about 10 minutes, we're going to hit the first big hill. We'll see how that goes. Okay, guys, leaving Teriyaki Madness, I'm at 89%. So. It's not 117 degrees outside, it's like 95 now, so we'll see how it goes. One myth I want to expel here, you guys, is about using the air conditioning and your range, especially when towing. Use the air conditioning, unless you're like almost at zero and trying to make it to a charger. I mean, look at this. And I haven't even hit the hills yet. 97% of my power is going to drive in, 3% for climate use. Why would you not use the AC? All right, shut the AC, do everything you can to save power. It's not saving much, guys. So I'm cruising along here in Blue Cruise. Love it. And I can tell you, one of the nicest things about towing with the E is power. Man, you have no problem. It's Power-wise, it's one of the best things I've ever towed this can am with. I mean, other than like a big truck or something where you don't notice it. Just drive the car like normal, pretty much. I've been taking a little easy accelerating a lot easier than I normally do just to save juice but you need power it's always there that's what's great about electric but yeah use the AC guys I'm tired of seeing these videos that say oh don't use AC when towing you know hurt your range really so so little it doesn't even make a difference okay guys here we go first big hill on I-70 I'm going to show it to you see how we do up it Okay guys, first big hill on I-70 and wow, power and torque of this E is unbelievable. With the trailer, I mean, I'm in the left lane passing everybody going 65. I could go faster if I wanted. It is definitely sucking the power down, but you know, towing with the E, I, I tell you what, if it's short distances and you have a lot of hills, I'd recommend it. Man, you have no problem with power anywhere. Look at this, 65, I'm in Blue Cruise. Of course, I got my hand on the wheel just to be safe, but you know, it's definitely sucking the power down. I'm down to 0.8 miles per kilowatt hour, but wow, it's nice to go up this hill like this at this speed. You know, no gas, motor is downshifting and all that. It's cruising like it would any other time, and a wonderful experience. Wonderful. Okay, guys, continuing along here, um, I took it out of cruise. But coming down the hill here, um, I'm at 72%. I'm going to tell you guys, really, wow, I've never towed up a hill like, you know, with an electric, I've never towed with an electric vehicle like that. Towing is so nice on the hills with this thing. It might suck the power down, but the experience is just wonderful. No noise, no shifting. And coming down here, I'm going to come down to a real steep section. It's going to come to a real sharp left-hand turn and if you live here you know there's a big bump on that left-hand turn it's always there that you gotta be kind of careful on if it's wet but i'm just cruising look at this 69 68 miles an hour and my trailer is back there behaving well and no sway or anything but honestly that's because of the trailer i'm telling i designed this trailer and i built the trailer from scratch and i purposely built it to handle you know rough conditions and no sway it has a lot of tongue weight which stops the sway so uh my trailer actually built to go 100 miles an hour if needed so without a problem so but we're gonna get out of that for a minute and go down this first hill and see how the maki -E handles if i have to use the brake i don't i'm gonna tell you right now i'm not gonna have to use the brake at all unless cars stop in front of me because the regen is just going to take care of all that. My rain, my kilowatt hour per mile is starting to go up a little bit. I'm back to one kilowatt hour a mile. Went to 0.8 when I was going up the big hill. But um, wow, I can't stop thinking about that experience, that power. I, going up that hill, just no problem. You know, just I, I can't 
I can't say it enough how how wonderful, like drama free climbing a hill, towing with the electric vehicle is. So you know we're coming up to another hill here. I am not in cruise right now, but I'm just gonna keep her right at 65, 66 right there. Staying right in the middle of traffic. Left lane's going a little slower than me. Right lane's going a little faster. I'll just lean into it just a little bit. I mean, I can pretty much go whatever speed I want here. Obviously, I have the power. Now I'm coming into some traffic, so maybe I let go quick enough. I don't won't have to use the brake. And there we go. And this is the downhill traffic. If you're from Colorado or you've driven here a bunch, you know, coming down this hill on busy days, it does get a bit of traffic because the trucks will have to take this real slow. And I know about that from taking it with my with my uh, big motorhome when I'm pulling big weight behind it. You take this real slow because you can, you can get out of hand real quick if you're going fast, you know. So I'm going to get down this hill and just keep moving on. I'm at 72% right now. And uh, at this point, I pretty much know I'm not going to have to charge it all. I'll be able to get up there and get back down. But... I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it right now. At the end, I'm probably gonna say the E is very good for doing short, close trips to go riding near your house. And wow, that guy on the bike! I don't care if he wants to go between cars; it's his business. But that was real close to me. Worried for his safety, but we're just gonna keep on moving. Okay, guys. Well, we're in traffic on I-70 going up the hill, so. You know, I can't say this invalidates this little test because on the average day, you might hit traffic, you know. Doing good. No problems. I got about that much traffic to go through, so it's going to take a little bit. I did turn off the AC just because I didn't really want it on. It's kind of cooled off a little bit, a little higher elevation. I don't need it. But I think I said this earlier. There's a myth that says, oh, don't use the AC because it's going to use a lot of your juice when you're when you're towing, especially. That's a myth, guys. Look at this. Climate use was 2%. I mean, that's nothing. Nothing. So, heck, use the AC. The majority of your power is going to go to towing the trailer, the driving. So, don't worry about using climate control while towing it. No, barely nothing, you know. Hopefully we get out of this traffic soon and we get up to Central City. I'm ready to go riding. Okay, so here we are, Central City. Not a big deal. 58% uh, left on the battery, which is way more than enough because going back is all downhill. And pretty much we left right from Denver. I'm gonna give you the mileage to here later on. I don't know it right now, but I will put it right there on the screen. Boom. And that's that, I'll tell you what. Towing with it was awesome, better than a truck. Just power, smooth, blue cruise, no problem at all. So we're gonna go ride this guy and have some fun. James has a Jeep, he's gonna get his Jeep up in there. And then we're gonna do the trip home. Okay, so just finished riding up in Central City. Super bright outside. Just did a quick little ride to test the Can-Am. I'm just waiting for James has a Jeep. We're already loaded up. We're going to head back. Right now, we have 58% left, and it's all downhill, so we'll be full. In fact, I'm probably going to drop this off and then drive home, not even charge. So, good experience. Good experience with the electric towing. Okay, so we're coming out of Central City now, and I still have 56% of range, and it's all downhill, so I'm going to use half of what I used to get up here to get home. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but if you're doing a lot of towing and it's local, I actually recommend an electric vehicle over gas. It's just the power and the smoothness. Going up hills, I, go any speed you want with no struggle, no revving, no nothing. Just a butter the whole way. So, I don't know guys, I... I love my electric vehicles. I really wasn't expecting the towing experience to be that great, but it is for short distances. Obviously, if you're going long distances and trips, you need a diesel or a gas truck, you know, like I got my, my Super Duty for that. But for short trips now with the, with the Can-Am, I might just you know, jump in this thing. It's just easier, saves money, not buying fuel and, and more power. It's great. 
at the bottom of Central City Parkway right now. That's what it's called. <laughs> Actually, the range went up. I left Central City at 56%. I'm at 57 now. And that's I-70 right behind me. I'm going to run in this little store here. And if you ever come up here, go. Because they have like the best beef jerky. And they have a huge, probably one of the biggest selections I've ever seen of jerky. So I'm going to grab some of that. And wait for James has a Jeep to get back over here. Get on 70 and head home. I wouldn't be surprised if my range didn't change all that much with all the downhill coming up. We'll see. Okay, so that's where we're at. We're at the end of the trip. 43% left. I don't know if that mileage reflects normally what I get or if it's kind of towing mileage now. Dakota. Dakota always barks when I'm outside, guys. Sorry. But, yeah. No, I'll tell you what. Uh, when I go riding locally, I'm, I'm not taking the truck. I'm just going to take the Mach-E. Worked out great, and the experience was great. Tons of power. It uh, just it just worked great.